Max Hall and Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cotchin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell from the Hawthorne Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hey friends, it's MJ from the Coaches Panel. Hope you're well, and we are one week through the festival of football and when i mean one week i really mean like five days it's mj i got kane on this episode and mate right now we're around about two hours away from the sunday afternoons games getting underway so but we thought you know what let's just get in let's talk about all the things we've learned and observed from the week and help fantasy footy coaches as they enter into these next few weeks because let's be honest their weeks is two but the matches that we're going to be having to navigate is three it's it's a tricky period for coaches to navigate Oh, MJ, absolutely. There's no real perfect time for a podcast these days. No. So I think you just got to get in there whenever you can. And the good thing about this point is we do have seven games of information under our belt. And with the way coaches have to handle this situation, you've got to be putting your trades together as you go. And you've got to give a massive shout out to the super coach community, what Bryce Mitchell's doing to give people up-to-date prices before the round locks out. Again, personally, he's an absolute hero in my book. What he's yep. doing letting you do those calculations and working out what you can and can't do. Because MJ, in a rolling format, there are some decisions you can still make with two games in advance yep. to set yourself up for future success. So I wanted to give him a shout out because he's doing unbelievable work in he's preparing people and helping them get through. At this Bryce Mitchell on Twitter time. is who you should be following, my friends. Him. He's an absolute absolutely. superstar. Because what he is doing is what coaches are having to adapt towards is not just thinking about the next 24 hours in advance, but looking long-term down the barrel. Like when the ball gets bounced tonight between Collingwood and Fremantle, almost within minutes, the Port Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs team is going to drop. And so you're going to have this 24-hour period, not just between games and lockouts, but you are also got that sort of time to very quickly adapt and forecast for what the coming week's going to be. There's probably one cash cow that if you didn't jump on him early last week, it seems inevitable that people will go for him. What's difficult is where Essendon have their fixture in this upcoming round. I am, of course, alluding to the Ruckman, Sam Draper. It's decent enough uh, this week on debut uh, up against the Brisbane Lions. But what's challenging for coaches is Essendon are the final game of the round on Friday night. So whatever you move to be able to bring that cash in, chances are you've got to make moves 70 odd hours ahead of actually seeing what other teams are going to do. Yeah, especially MJ when it's a downgrade because yeah. in most people's situation, they want that downgrade to spend it on a premium. So if you want to get, let's just say McRae, for example, yeah. And, we, and as you said, at this point in time, Draper's clearly the number one downgrade target. Yeah. So you're going to have to make a decision to bring Draper in on Monday night before <laughs> McRae goes. And also, you know, what if you're trading a rookie, yeah. which rookie is it? Because if we use the example of Sam Simpson, especially in a super coach sense, his score last night, hmm. it's actually put him in you know, a really good spot to generate almost another 50 grand. Yeah. The tricky part is, you won't know if he's actually named in the team. And with the players that are around the mark to come back for Geelong, Selwood, mm. you know, Doe House has got a bit of long-term injury, but, you know, Stephen, there's a lot of guys Michael, that yeah. are around the mark, and especially in those roles uh, that Simpson plays. Duncan, you know, split his time between the wing and inside mid. Mm. But we know when Selwood's back in the side, he's going to take more of that inside yeah. time. And it really pushed Sam Simpson, you know, to the half-forward flank, which is yeah. not his natural position. So there'll be a lot of coaches weighing up, you know, do I move Simpson on thinking he might get dropped? I want to hold him because he's got a bit more cash to make. And that's what's going to get really, really tricky for coaches is which rookie are you actually going to move on? And are you too nervous to bring in a McRae? Yeah. Because it means you'll have to burn your trades by Monday. And this round, MJ, finishes on a Friday, this next one. Yeah. There's a and lot of water Saturday, to go under the bridge. Yeah, and then Saturday, the next one gets underway. For, for coaches, depending on the format you play, Supercoach and Dream Team, it is just the best 18 scorers that will count. They've got to be on the field to be con in a contendership of those 18 scorers. Supercoach and Dream Team, that is what you've got with the multiple trades per round that you can use. While AFL Fantasy, a little bit more of a unique approach through that format. It is 22 players on field. However, if your player is on a buy round and was named 
in the previous round. So sorry, Michael Walters owners, he going to get you nothing. You will get their season average score, which is a nice, unique challenge, which I suppose like there's a positive maybe if you're a Sam Doherty owner, where over the past four weeks, he hasn't gone over 65. Yet in AFL fantasy, if you look at across what he's been able to average over the whole year, not just what he's been doing over the past few years, it's a 79 they'll probably round him up to. So there's, there's some new unique challenges for coaches in that format of the game too to navigate. Yeah, that's a really interesting one, MJ. And especially there's the rookies. You know, if we've yeah. got Keane playing today for Collingwood. If yeah. he pops out a 65-70 score, which, you know, anyone can do on their day, especially yeah. playing in that Collingwood defence where, you know, they like to possess the ball. All of a sudden, he becomes an absolute no-brainer in that format because you yeah. are guaranteeing you know, sorry, you're not going to get that with him. Um, who am I thinking of? Who's a rookie? Maybe it's a Tobe Watson. If he came out with a big score today, because he's on yeah. that bye yeah. the next week. Excuse me. So any of those guys where you think, yep, I can take that bye score. And I think it is the Doherty types. You don't really want the guys that are in red hot form who started slow. Yeah. You want guys like a Doherty who have a good average. But as you mentioned, the current form is really, really concerning. That's the ones where there's some definite strategy in moving those guys in and banking that score. Like an Andrew Gaff owner, they would be absolutely livid with what he put out yesterday in Dream yep. Team and AFL Fantasy, but at least you know that average is still really solid, albeit it dropped, I believe, five points yep. on last night alone. Yeah, he's down to an 87 now in terms of an AFL Fantasy and Dream Team. And, and it is an interesting strategy. He's going to really drop a little bit more in price in that format, still around about that 780K at time of recording, like we said. Still a couple of games in the, in the round to go. But it will be interesting to me to see if coaches do one or two things, purely focusing on AFL fantasy at the moment. Do they trade in these type of players and force that they know they get this score? So if you're trading Gaff in on the buy, you know you're going to get an 87, but also you believe you're going to be improving your side. But on the other side, do you look to a Sam Doherty and go, he's been poor of late. For, in terms of scoring, no, no commentary on what he's doing as a player because Carlton is certainly doing as well as they ever have for the past five to eight years. But from a fantasy perspective, he, he's had one score over 80 in his past five, and that was five weeks ago. Do you then take him and go, you know what? Here's my chance to get to a McRae or to a Neil. Here's my chance. And both have pretty reasonable matchups this week, especially Neil up against the, the Tigers who do not tag. This might be the way you choose to get the Neil, the Gorn, the, the Whitfield, the Lloyd. Would you advocate for that kind of move in an AFL fantasy? Well, it's certainly aggressive, MJ, isn't it? Again, yeah. I think you're under the idea that you'd have to be very confident that this is probably where Doherty is going to be yeah. you know, for, for the next little while. Because clearly, in terms of defenders, if we're talking about guys with a ceiling oh. who can come out and really hurt you on the other side, Lloyd's the only Doherty one. can do yeah. that. And that's the interesting thing with, with people tagging Doherty and putting so much time into him is that it hasn't really, you know, impacted Carlton's ability to win or lose. No. You know, they had a game against the Bulldogs where he was quiet. It wasn't as obvious a tag as the attention that a Jasper Pittard was putting into him. Yeah. You know, but Carlton won both of those games. And then conversely, you know, yesterday against the Hawks, oh, sorry, the day before against the Hawks, it wasn't anything really deliberate. You know, it just... The ball wasn't coming his way and, you know, still a solid super coach output. Mm. But I always think with these guys, you're not selling at a high. You know, we're yeah. talking about him almost coming back down to what people bought him at at the start of the year. And when I see that output mm. and know what he can deliver if he gets the space that he normally gets, and yeah. we know he's great at finding that space. I think the thing that's hurting him, we spoke about it in the preseason with him, MJ, is that his game style when he scored really well, is possessing it in the defensive half. Yeah. If you've watched Carlton, they're very direct now. If they get a mm. chance, they want to go forward at all costs, yeah. take ground, and, and use the aerial ability of a Casbold on the wing, Mackay on the wing, and then wheel and go. Put it in yeah. there. Give Jack Martin, Eddie Betts, those guys a chance. So that game style of kicking it around the back, possessing it, and trying to work it up the field, yeah. it hasn't been the way Carlton played. And, it, and honestly, MJ, a factor has to be the conditions. You're playing in Queensland this time of year, mm. dewy conditions. It's not easy to kick the ball around. Obviously, they're at Optus Stadium yeah. now, so it's a bit easier to do that in the, in the wide open spaces. But I feel like game style has always been a massive factor 
in Doherty playing really well and scoring huge. And also, I think his teammates are just starting to grow in a lot of confidence as well. You know, Cade Simpson's a great user. The way Weedering uses the ball for a tall defender yeah, is really absolutely good. elite. So they don't force it into his hands. So for me, I'd be cautious moving him on because what I'm trading him at, I just don't see much upside. You know, the players you're talking about are the ones it would have to be, though. Yeah. If you're going to get rid of a Doherty, you need to go, go to a guy that you think is a genuine captaincy option each and every week. And yeah. to me, Lockie Neal is putting on, you know, that Tom Mitchell Brownlow season. It, yeah. it really feels that way to me. You know, he's got a great team. They're at home for the rest of the year. Yeah. He, he, he clearly knows it too. If you heard him post game, he's talking about getting some touches late. And he's working for those marks and those kicks and, and Brisbane look for him. Like it's just a great mix of everything seems to be falling Lockie Neal's way. So honestly, he's probably the only player that I would feel comfortable doing that too. Yeah. And also, a lot of these defender rookies are actually doing quite well. So Egmalee Smith, he's getting within 10 to 15 points of Doherty at the moment. Yeah. Will Day is doing his job. Yeah. So there is some actual options with really good job security, at least in the short term, True. that can do it. But for me personally, I have to back in that Doherty you know, will come back to be what we're accustomed to. Yeah. Because um, he's just in two weeks, MJ, as you know, he can go 120, 120. Yeah, true. And really, really hurt you on the other side. Yeah, there's only a couple of defenders in, in AFL fantasy and dream team scoring format that have turned up this year, um, and he's one of them. So, yeah, I think so. You, you bring up Lockie Neal. It's an interesting one. As always here at the Coaches Panel, we just jump around formats and conversations as we go because, like you, we love playing all formats of fantasy footy and talking about it. You bring up this guy, Lockie Neal. Is this the final opportunity for non-owners to go and get him? He had a, a quiet couple of weeks. Let's be honest. It was one. It was Matt DeBoer tag. Um, that kind of slowed him down a, a little bit. Geelong's score wasn't crazy, at least in AFL Fantasy and Dream Team. Is this now the only opportunity that coaches can foresee um, that now is the time to get him? Because you, when you do look at the next fortnight, it actually does look pretty good for scoring for him too. Richmond don't tag. Neither really do the Western Bulldogs. Josh Dunkley's back into the side this upcoming round, which is positive. So there'll be some defensive pressure rolling through there. Is this our last chance to get Lockie Neal? Or do we think there might be another chance later in the year for non-owners? I think, MJ, this is probably one of the last chances to get him at a good price. Yeah. Because like you said, that score against the Giants is the only real one. If we look at a super coach point of view, he's priced at 136 going into this round. Break even of 170. So he'll drop slightly. Let's just say he's priced at about 134. Yeah, he'll hold. Going on for the rest of the season, I got a lot of confidence he can easily eclipse that. Yeah. You know, so I think what you're paying for, you're going to get. Yeah. You know, I'll speak about someone else later who I think at the moment there's as good a time as any to jump ship because I think what their value is. And I'll I might as well get into it now because it's yeah, James yeah. Sicily and Jay. It's and James Super Sicily Coach? and Super Coach. Yeah. yeah. Again, we're talking about a guy that prior to this round, five seventy nine k break even of thirty four. So he scored, you know, just right around the ninety mark. Mm. He'll probably just touch six hundred thousand dollars, which puts him pretty much at an average of what you're paying for, of one twenty. One twenty points for James Sicily. Nope. He's clearly been great. He's going at one ten for the season, but his previous three were outrageous: one thirty two, one forty nine, one sixty four before yeah. this weekend. MJ, I've said this last week, and I'll say it again: even after Tom Stewart went berserk last night. Yeah. You're going to make over $150,000 yeah. dropping down Sicily to Tom Stewart, who, yeah. who's priced in the mid-80s. Yeah, and we know what he delivered man. last night. He's easily closer to a 100 type of player. So it's hard to find cash this year for a lot of cash cows. And the yeah. ones that are doing well, I just don't think they're ready to cash out. Amalian Pickett, you don't want to move him on. Nope. Another 100 on the weekend in Supercoach, you want to hold on to him as long as possible. So, yeah. you know, you might have someone... Like Kavara, you got no intention to move him on There's and make no nothing. There. You know, no. least with the Tom, least with the Tom Stewart from Sicily, you've got him on the field this week. Yep. And worst case scenario, Hawthorne can do anything any given week. You know, Sicily's had a great season so yeah. far, but there's always that cloud. You know, I just don't think that Sicily will go at 120 from here on in. Yeah. Coming okay. back to Lockie Neal at 136, that is more than capable for him you know yeah. he's such a good scorer and like i said especially in super coach 
he's scoring at such a rate that with, you know, if he's scoring hundreds in Dream Team yeah. and the super coach Pi is remaining the same, yeah. like he has that ability to average greater than we've ever seen just because of these circumstances. Mm. You know, Gary Ablett obviously had a 140 season, you know, when there was normal minutes and he wasn't eating into that pie. Lockie Neal's, you know, only playing about seven or eight minutes less game time than last year. Yeah. And his scoring rate's gone up. Yeah, so he's just eating more and more of that pie. And like you noticed the other day, he's such a good first quarter scorer. And if you've yeah. watched Supercoach scores tick over this year, first if quarter. you're not having a good first quarter, it's really hard to fight back unless the game gets really close late. Yeah. Because if you're not doing that, you just can't peg back. I know Georgie Artis yeah, good, was a player on the weekend that he started well, gave away two fifties and a free kick. And at half time, he was on, you know, a measly, he was sub 10 points. Yeah. He had a great second half, but Port Adelaide was so far in front. It didn't matter. But the way Supercoach points were getting divvied out, it wasn't working. So, yes, I, if you can get Lockie Neal, mm. I would almost go out any way you can to get it done. Yep. Because I just feel like what you're paying for, you will get in return. And then in you super- haven't even factored in the captaincy approach as well. Would that be the same in, in Dream Team and, and Fantasy, uh, where it's, depending on the format, say a Mitch Duncan, who's very, very going to be a popular pickup after that low score, injury affected, came back and has shown over the past two weeks just how quality a footballer he is and how unheralded he is, largely across not just the fantasy community, but just the footballing community in general. Um, he's going to be a very, very popular trade-in option for us this week. It's a hundred to two hundred thousand, depending on the format you play. Is he, as in Lockie Neal, worth that extra cash more so than a Mitch Duncan, where their averages, you know, take the injury affected average out of, of Duncan, aren't as dramatically as far apart as they might be in, say, in Supercoach? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, MJ. And also the factor is that. Lockie Neal still scored a 73 against a ball. So yeah. 73 is a better score than 87 super coach. So like that pricing dip, yep. you haven't, you haven't felt that value that you're getting in super coach this week. Yeah. So in that sense, I think Duncan is a type of player that for what you're getting in return, the caveat I will say with that is I want to be, I want to be using that catch this week. Mm. If you're picking Duncan over Neal for me, yep. that cash needs to be put back on the field immediately this week. Because I'm going to back in Lockie Neal every week to outscore pretty much anyone yeah. in the competition at the moment. So if I'm choosing between those two and, you know, that 200,000 difference isn't going to get me from a rookie to a player I want, mm. I'm going to take Neal. Yeah. If it's a difference between, you know, getting Egmalee Smith to Tom Stewart. Sure. You know, there I think I'm going to start eating into some of those points. And I think the value there is important. But if it's just a straight, I can get one of these guys. I'm taking Neil. Yeah. And as I said, if you can use the cash, you know, in a broader uh, trade plan, that's where I think someone like a Duncan, who clearly, like you said, prevents mass- presents massive value yeah. after that hamstring injury. He does. Um, it's an interesting one. Like in AFL fantasy, it's, it's best 22 on field. We talked about that and the fact that if your player was named this current round um, that is just in motion for us at the moment and is on the buy, we get their season average score. However, in AFL Fantasy and Dream Team, it's best 18. So we're going to lose four clubs this week and then additional two next week. And as yet, the AFL haven't announced anything further, but let's be honest, more condensed fixture and multi-buy rounds are coming of varying shapes and sizes. But Carlton, Fremantle, Hawthorne and West Coast. Look, there's probably two premium mids that in coaches might have maybe three you know mitchell cripps and fife although his ownership numbers have dipped a little bit with, with him out in injury from a backline perspective there's ryan sicily and doherty maybe hern for some owners uh, from a forward perspective brayshaw's probably the only one that walters have. maybe as well, yeah, MJ walters as well. As well. yeah good call but when most coaches will probably have maximum of three premiums they're missing this week. Some might only have one or two with, you know, Mitchell and, and Doherty being the predominant two that coaches have. Is there the need for coaches in this week where our number one cash cow is so late in the round in Draper um, and the unknowns it takes to be able to lock him in and then maximize that cash. Is this the week in dream team and super coach to get super aggressive with upgrades of our premiums or is maybe next week and the following where we still have the three trades a week, 
is that the better time to use them knowing we're only probably one or two premiums down outside of Duncan and Stewart, no one's screaming like loudly. There are others. There's a lot of them. Let's be honest. And we'll talk about them soon. But is this the week to maybe not have to go all in? Well, it's, it's really interesting MJ, because I guess what you're alluding to is if you've got 22 on field yeah, and a rookie pops up and has a good score, a you know, you're not really going to, you know, yeah, well, you're not going to get hurt that badly by someone, you know, that might have an extra premium or two than you because yeah. they're going to have to drop some scores out anyway. The thing yeah. that I will say is value is value and I still want to build yeah. my team. Good call. So if I can get in a Tom Stewart, a Mitch Duncan, the other one that I think is really back on everyone's radar after a slow start by his standards is, is Dusty Martin. He was huge. With that, with that score in his average that he delivered on the weekend, especially in Supercoach where yeah. it's 184. Now there's, now there's a clock on that because you've got to act this week really if you yeah. want to get him at a good price. Because with that in his score, it's going to be up around 550 grand. And now we're talking about 50 to 70 grand more than the likes of, you know, a, a gaff off a buy. Yeah. Travis Boak's been sensational this year. He's going to bottom out around the 480 mark. So now yeah. really quickly, Dusty becomes... I wouldn't call him value, but just a good option. But yes. you're going to have to pay for that too. So, you know, can you fit in? I think Brody Smith, we know, we know coaches were eyeing him off after he had a poor score where he just didn't use the footy well two rounds ago. Yep. Last week, he was in the 120s. This week, copped the knock early and yep. didn't use it by foot to his standard. So he's, he's hovering around 400K. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think personally, even though he doesn't have a, we don't know when his buy is, I think I much prefer him than a Shannon Hearn, you know, Brody Smith in a best 18 scenario where you've got the enormous upside and ceiling yeah. of 120 plus scores with the hope that I can knock out some of his low scores, you know, just with having more than 18 on the field. I think yeah. he presents great value. And as you mentioned before, in Supercoach, if this is your shot to get Lockie Neal, yeah. like very quickly that falls away. So I think coaches really have to map out you know, who do I want to get? Who do I need for the structure of my team? Which I know is really challenging because we don't know, you know, do I want to bring in mm. Dusty because it helps with the buys over a lock in here? But yeah. we don't know when their buys are. So I think you have to look at your team, especially in those different lines and see where the best value lies. And I think what will decide it for most coaches mm. is if I do the cheaper guy, if I do the Duncan over Neil, Yep. Can I pick up that extra premium? I think that's going to be the situation yeah. for a lot of coaches because yeah. it's really tricky. It's really tricky with so much value. And then we also have all the value of guys buy free the future week. So there'll be a lot of coaches who want to keep some cash in the bank. Yeah. You know, maybe they love what Draper did and Keane has a great game today. Yeah. And all of a sudden they want two downgrades to be cashed up for the future. But clearly then MJ, you're not getting both Stewart and Duncan. You're not no. getting Neil and Martin. No. So really quickly, you know, these guys that present value, like we mentioned, with big scores, next week they're not, they're not longer value anymore. You know, you're mm. paying 50 to 60K more. So I think you have to do a really good look at your team, plan out, you know, I think the other thing that makes a difference, MJ, is when do you have to make these moves by? Yeah, you know, it's true. Do, is it, are you better off, you know, waiting a week? You know, do you want to wait a week and just see you know, what's happening with these teams? Like, for instance, you know, Richmond and Brisbane on Tuesday. Mm. But if you're more interested in, you know, Brody Smith, well, at least that's Wednesday. You know, yeah. if you're more interested in Stewart and Duncan, they're Wednesday as well. So there might be more reason to go down the Cats line yeah. just because it gives you an extra day to see the Thursday teams before yeah. you make a move. So there's going to be a lot of factors for people to consider, but, at the end of the day, I think you've got to take value where it lies and whoever you think out of these guys presents the most value and, and obviously presents the most upside. You know, what mm. rookie are you removing off the field to get in Dusty? What rookie are you removing to get in Martin or Stewart? So, as you said, there's never been a more important time to plan. Yeah. Because as you mentioned, MJ, there's not going to be much time to make these decisions either. No, well, you think about what it is, is you'll get to tonight's game underway you know the Port Adelaide Bulldogs team. As that game's getting underway, you'll know the Tigers and Lions game. As that game is getting underway, at least the positive of Wednesday footy 
is there's then two teams playing on Wednesday and Thursday. So there is that positive for coaches, I suppose, that it, unless they're desperately needing to get a, a Jackson McRae, or using him as the example, not saying he's the one you have to, but saying he's certainly been in red hot form and a vice captaincy option every week. If he was the one you were being targeting off, yeah, Draper's the number one cow. You're probably going after him. Um, the other one that might pop for us is Keane, who we haven't seen. Unfortunately, Edwards got knocked out early. Strawn, who was the late in for Tex Walker. Neither of those guys showed us a lot. Edwards, certainly from a concussion perspective, didn't get a chance to do that. So it does become difficult where now it's going, okay, Stuart Smith, okay, now I get the opportunity to look at my Melbourne players as well. That latter opportunity in the week does start to give coaches that okay, at least I get 48 more hours to plan my moves. The other thing, MJ, that you do have a massive advantage with is if you're trading a buy player, mm. for instance, you know, my Sicily trade down to a Tom Stewart. Yeah. I can leave that as long as I want. Yeah, Wednesday night. You know, if I, if I, want, if I wanted to wait for a Giants player, you know, that's a, they allow you the flexibility of moving your buy players mm. right until that last game locks out. Yeah. So that. There could be merit if you're moving on, you know, Johnny Segler was one that was yeah. floated for coaches that, you know, people might think, you know, depending how they're structured up for the buy, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a bit in you know, a bother here with Segler. I might mm. move him on and bring in another player. So at least you've got the flexibility with those guys on the buy. Yeah. But you can wait, you know, maybe it's a Doherty and you're 50, 50. If I trade him, all of a sudden the guy that you thought was playing, isn't playing. Yeah. At least you can move on those buy guys all the way through the end of the round, but I agree, MJ. It would be make me really nervous if I was bringing in a Port or Bulldogs player yep. and having to use multiple trades to do it on the first night because yeah. we just don't know how players are pulling up and especially when the round's stretched over five days. Yeah. Well, it we just saw become it, didn't super. We, we saw yeah, it even this week with we coaches choosing to give guys a, a extra time to be re ready and ripe. Well, even in-game, once the game was iced, we saw certain coaches throw players deep forward or give them 10, 15 minutes on, on the interchange. And for coaches to keep maintaining their best players on the ground, we might, if we see blowouts, because outside of the Eagles and Cats game, again, we're recording before the Sunday mm. games have got underway. They were all done and dusted by three quarter time. And so coaches had that opportunity to go, you know what? I'll pull a Jai Simpkin back a little bit. Um, he, he's not been 100% ripe and right over the past couple of weeks. Let's just ease him in over these next couple of weeks. Or maybe a Lockie Neal. Maybe Brizzy just get the job done against the Tigers or the reverse early and it gets to three-quarter time, 30, 40-point margin. Go, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'd rather have that player cherry ripe for a game that we could get four points or four points more and it's not going to make a difference. So we're going to see in-game restings not just in between round restings yeah well those are honestly mj the more troubling ones yeah. especially for captaincy options and that's why we spoke about last week just having to drop your vice captaincy threshold yeah just drop it down because you don't want what, what we saw with Brody grundy last week against west coast where mm. that clearly happened you know the game wasn't going to be won by collingwood yeah they gave darcy cameron the ruck roll and Brody sat forward for the majority of the last quarter so that will happen, that yeah. management, because they obviously want to win every game. Don't yeah. think that they're going to put a side in they don't think is going to win. But it's moves, like you said, three-quarter time, we're down by eight goals, we're up by eight goals. Let's spin things around. You know, the guy that usually gets 60% game time, you know, you play the majority of the last quarter. Yeah. Like, it's that type of stuff we're going to see. And it's that type of stuff that's really, really risky. And we haven't even got into you know, your emergency loopholes obviously yeah. becomes a lot easier in best 18 because you're probably going to lose some players anyway. So you're yep. already probably taking those guys, you know, next week, let's just say it's Sicily and Ryan. Yep. They're on the bench. You're putting everyone you've got on the field. So it, it's really easy to loophole and not get burned in these best 18 rounds. Yes. But MJ, I saw some horror stories yesterday of people putting Kieran Strawn on the field. Oh no. To oh, take the no. captaincy score. Because he played later in the week, which we know was a big issue for people vice captain Gorn, because the two most popular players to loophole were his teammates, yeah. Trent Rivers in defence, Harley Bennell in the midfield. Oh man. But obviously you couldn't use it because you were vice captains in Gorn. So people put Strawn and as captain in that oh, ruck line an emergency to Grundy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you were on your phone before when that news came in that he was a late in, because that's the type of stuff in those type of rounds. 
like we had this week. Yeah. And we won't have it for the next two, but we'll pick it up again in round 12. You try to get fancy and save, you know, 20 points loopholing a, def- you know, a defender. If there's a laid out and everyone's locked out, like I look at my team today, if Luke Ryan doesn't play, I've already loopholed Egmalee Smith and Will Hamill's locked out. Yeah. So I'm looking down the barrel of a donut. I got or a one trade. trade up my sleeve. Yeah. But do I really want to do something like that? So I think a lot of coaches will err on the side of caution. Let's just put the who I think is the best six on field and defense yeah. and the emergency because this stuff's going to happen. And it's stuff like that where your other emergency players locked out. Yeah. And now you can't and now you can't do anything besides maybe use a trade if you've got it. Yeah. So I feel like again the planning and the loopholing becomes less and less worthwhile because mm. the risk of eating a donut just because you took a loophole is really, really hard unless you've got rookies that play at the end of the round. That's always a great safety net. Like a Sam Sturt and a Butterick today, if you knew a Ford was a laid out, yeah, it's very easy to switch those guys around. But totally, that's not always going to be the case. No, it's true. And it is still important for us to have those non-playing options available for us too. What's difficult for those that might still have a Kavara and a Butler, because the Bulldogs through this condensed fixture are generally the first or the second team in the round. Yeah. They're null and void predominantly because you're probably trying to loophole them with McRae, as you've said, with Gorn as well. And I've got one for you that I find really interesting and really tricky at this time of year. Mm. You know, Conroy, especially in a DT or a super coach, which utilized a rolling lockout. Yeah. He's been a great R3. You know, he doesn't clash with a Grundy or a Gorn. Mm. And he, you know, usually the Suns play later in the weekend, especially yes. for a Collingwood who plays early. You usually get a free look at Brody Grundy and then you can make a call. Yep. We're getting to a point now because he's bargain basement. You're paying cash to get yeah. him to Draper. Yes. Now that's, it's a lot easier for the coaches with Darcy Cameron. Yep. Very easy to swing him out of ruck. Yeah, you know, and with so much DPP this year, just the way the rookies have fallen, yeah, you can easily trade, you know, a Butterick, you can trade Curtis Taylor. Taylor. The possibilities whatever. are endless yeah. with that, and it makes absolute sense because you're trading Taylor to Draper. Mm. It's got to be really tricky, you know. As good as I think Draper is, mm. there's you're not actually getting cash back, and no. the only time ideally you want to use Draper, and I'll go with the most standard ruck combination, which would be Gorn and Grundy. Yep is that one week where Brody Grundy has a buy. That's the one week where That's you're hoping one. maybe Draper will help me out. If you've got 22 playing that week... doesn't matter. You know, so now you get to the point where you think, I'm going to pay you know, 15, 20K to get up to Draper, right? Yeah. What does he have to make? Because I'm going to have to cash him down to get any value mm. back out of him. Because let's be honest, MJ, if a Gorn or Grundy go down, you're trading them. You're not totally. putting... I, I don't think Draper's going to be the Riley O'Brien of last year no. where you can move him on the field. I think he's, especially when he's splitting ruck, which with Belcho, played yeah. his first game. It's going to happen, whether it's Belcho and him, McKernan and him. Phillips, I don't whatever. think he's going to be... Yeah. I don't think he's got the scoring capacity to be, yep, I'll keep Conroy and I'll drop Grundy down no. you know, or do something crazy. I just don't think... So if you're in that situation where you've got a non-playing ruckman like that, maybe mm. it's Sherry. Yeah. Are you going to do it for, you know, maybe you're paying 20K or you're making 20K or are you going to have to just let Draper go by and, and look, worry about something else? Yeah, it's the hard part, isn't it? What would you do? Do you think you have to just let him go? Uh, if you're not, unless it's getting you points on field or cash in the bank. Which is no not point. with Conroy. Not with Conroy. Yeah, it's no. not with, yeah. It's not with him. It's like I said, uh, if you're getting Taylor out and that's getting yeah. you that 100, 150K, um, that's fine. Or if it's getting and also as well, field, it might okay. open up a Darcy Cameron who played sensational against Frio. He was really, really if, good. If, if Brody Grundy's going to get in-game resting, yeah. And Frio is a pretty good matchup this week. Yeah. Darcy Cameron could actually be one of the better on-field rookies. Yes. Yeah. We saw what he scored last week, so maybe in that sense, it's it's great. But again, if you're a Conroy owner, if you're another, you know, Jordan be. Sweet, these type of guys, I think unfortunately. I think you got to pass. You are handcuffed in a position where you just have to let Draper go by because I think at this time of year, even with the extra trades, yep. you're really going to spend one of those precious trades on doing that. Like I said, I'd rather you hold that trade and move do. a Sicily or a Doherty on Get and at least give yourself way. another premium body on the field or yeah. cash. So I feel like there's a few coaches that will be in that position 
And unfortunately, it's just not the time of the year. If it's early in the season, Different you can story. get away with it. Yeah. But now there's coaches either making cash for a future upgrade or executing an upgrade. To do a sideways rookie, and Kavar is in the year. same boat. Yeah. It's un- you're unfortunate. You've got to hope. You've got to hope like Georgiades. Yep. You wait, you wait, you wait, and, and he it- comes in. Well, a couple of years ago, Josh Dunkley is an example. Again, we're not saying Kavara is Dunkley, but he played a couple of games. This was when it was a three-week price cycle, and he was stalled at that two-week period for about eight to nine weeks. But then in the back half of the year, as a mid-forward, he was bumping out 70s for us right across the board and became one of the most valuable commodities at the back end of the year for your depth coverage. So I think those sort of players, as best you can, you just go, well, you never hope for injuries for others. You just hope for opportunities that might come that hopefully give you a chance to get some cash out of them. Yeah, I, I think if you're a Conroy, Sherry, sweet style owner, Draper, you've just got to let him go. The, the good thing we are going to see over these next few weeks is we are going to see a lot of squads expose different players. Now, they might not get more than two or three weeks, but we are going to see a lot of squads expose people. We're going to see a lot of, you know, Adelaide, North Melbourne, Sydney, um, Fremantle, these arguably bottom four C- sides giving a lot of games to inexperienced and debutantes because they've got to see what the fullness of their list could look like in a few years' time. Now, MJ, this is an interesting one because we've spoken about this guy a lot and he's, no. he's another one you have to make a decision, I think, this week or okay. you're in it for the long haul. What about if someone said, I've got Tim English. Oh. I want to drop him down yep. to Draper. Drop Tim English has got the 200. He's got 200 in Supercoach. This is the last week that's but sitting in his rolling average. The previous two games, no good. Not good. Uh, he, he's barely scored half of that 200 in the last two weeks, such as his dip in scoring. Yeah. You're in the span of two to three weeks. Yeah. You're going to lose... Probably anywhere between 80 to 130 grand. Give or take, yep. Again, nice matchup this week. Yep. You know, not, not a real super scary yeah. you know, Port Adelaide rut combo. At the moment. Yeah. We'll see if Lysette is healthy. Yep. But maybe someone's thinking, you know, I think Draper is a 65 guy. Yeah. You know, maybe I think that is what happens. If I drop an English down to Draper, now I'm armed with an absolute... Bucket yeah, load. We're talking K. nearly 400, 500k mark. If you're doing that and you're moving, let's just say, Sammy Simpson up yep, and Egmalee Smith up, yeah. well, in a weird sort of way, you've just turned, you know, if you do the whole picture, it's, yep. you know, an underperforming premium and two rookies yep. to two premiums yes. and one rookie. Is that a type of move that you would think if someone's in that situation, and again, they've obviously, they're turning down a Gorn, they're turning down totally. a Grundy because they think, you know, I'll take the two value premiums. Yeah. Is that a scenario where you think, yep, that's how I can get Draper in Yep. and still keep points coming in on foot and still keep upgrading? Yeah, I think, I think there's two things around that. I think the initial thought is yes, because you're, you're thinking about the immediate points on field benefit. And so it's not just Draper... And English and what's the gap or the gap between Gorn and Draper. It's, it's the, as we always talk about, it's what it. you do with the spending of that cash in every single other trade. So I think the immediate payoff over that two to three weeks on the premise, your premium score well is right. My only hesitation about it is, is that we are now entering into what seven to eight weeks left in the year. Um, at the conclusion of this, with 18 rounds, um, the, pre- the presumption that we're going to have a full 18 rounds. What makes me a little bit nervous around that is that is you're dropping all the way down to a basement. And at some point in the year, you are going to want to get one of the 3G Ruckman with maybe as O'Brien is unique. Maybe, you know, they're the four you really would probably want. Marshall's been good though, by the way. So I wouldn't be opposed to that too. But really, let's call it the three Gs for the sake of it. That's $500,000 you've got to find a way to get back to at another point in time in the, in the year as well. So yes, you're going to get Duncan and Stewart. Say them. You're turning a, a Simpson yep. and an Egmalee Smith or a Stasevich up. Points per f- field, are you right for probably about three to four weeks? Yeah, I think you probably are. But as the year goes on, are you going to then be able to get the Ruckman that you want? That would be my only caveat of flag of concern around it because I think you're right. Points on field, now you're good. Can you get to the side you want to get to in five weeks' time 
from Draper? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the th- I think the interesting part MJ two is and where it gets tricky for that situation mm. is he is clearly the best rookie. So let's yeah. just say that Keane doesn't score well. Sure, Keane doesn't get picked in the side again. Your ruck line is gone. English Conroy, right? Yeah. So now, what are you going to do? How are you going to get the cash? And who are you going to? Are you going to burn a position? Are you just yeah. going to go? I'm going Curtis Taylor to. I'm just going to hope this person plays. I'm yeah. going to go on a Kavara and just. That's where I think it might swing it back in that favour because yeah. at least you're bringing in the rookie. Correct. That will appreciate. And ideally, if you're bringing in the Duncan and the Stewarts, yeah, there's points on field. That's where I think in that scenario it does tip it in that favour because I agree. Especially best 18s as well. Yeah, it's a long way back. Yeah. If it is a long way back if you're dropping down, even if Draper got to 300, we're talking another 300 plus. Yeah. But conversely, if you spend it all on that, it's still another 500K you have to earn to get the next Tom Stewart, the totally. next Mitch Duncan in the future. So I think that's where if I was in that situation, I probably would look at it that way yeah. just purely because Draper is the clear cut rookie. Yes. And as we mentioned, I'm not doing a Conroy and paying money. Nah, I'm not doing a share. Like that's where I think, you know, maybe coaches would become hyper aggressive. Maybe the they only would player say, I'd do it with English is the only yeah. player I'd do it with. Yeah. yeah so you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it with a Grundy. If no, people I came out and said, yeah, no, nah, it, it, it's not. Where Pitternet was You'd going, those 130s. Yeah, I'd rather You'd take rather the take chance. a chance and say, I'll find another rookie. Yeah. You know, someone else will get named. Even yep. if they haven't played a game, I'll yep. take a chance. Yeah, that's what I would do. I, to, to go down from one of those top liners, I just don't think it's worth it. Like the, the drop between, say, what you're doing with the Sicily and Stuart as that combination it, is you're thinking, I'm going to make 150 odd K and I'm going to get a comparable score. You, it, for the most part, now injuries can play a part in it, but luck is a part of the game. We've seen that all this year. But that makes sense to me. To drop 500K down, to only have to find a way to get 500K back up, when you probably, there actually could be a 100 points gap between those scores most yeah. weeks. What, Grundy. what you're really relying on then, MJ, isn't it? That Collingwood either give him a rest yeah, or Collingwood give him an in-game rest like we saw last week. Totally. And as we always say with these things, it's so contingent on who you pick. Yeah. If you jump off Grundy and there's a rest coming up, then Collingwood's buyers round 13. You look like maybe, a maybe you look like a genius. Maybe. But we saw with that pit net move that we talked about about a month ago. Yeah. Very quickly. Go, oh, sour. it's Grundy and a rookie versus pit net and a you know, premium. Yeah. Gr- Grundy individually can put 150 points and beat that premium in a pit totally. net score plus a rookie. So, yeah. And you've spent trades to do it. Yeah. I just found, I think that's a situation that a few of our listeners will be in because yep. English had a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz. especially after the so. 200. Yeah. Absolutely. He was in a rich vein of form. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the 200s actually kept his price steady. Yes. That's the one, that's the one good thing. His score was so big mm. that he actually hasn't moved up or down very much since you bought him. Yes. So you haven't had an absolute plummet in value. Like Doherty, like we mentioned, you can't really trade him now because the value's not there. And no. I think what his upside is, isn't worth it. But yet there'll be coaches that have that ruck line, you know, Grundy and Gorn yeah. and an English and a Conroy. And they're looking at, this is the, this is the rookie I want in Draper. Mm. And I think maybe that's a scenario that can get you out of a pickle yeah. and, and still have some points. Because again, you can't lose sight of the big picture of improving your team. Yes. I know these buys get really hectic. Yeah. But like, like we mentioned, I'll go through them again just real quick. This is guys that I think are absolute value across all formats. Defense. Yep. Stuart and Brody Smith. Yep. Lockie Neal, Mitch Duncan. Travis Boak is also, if you want a unique, yeah. who's got a bit of a form dip, right up there. Dusty. Yep. Bailey Smith as well is still very, very affordable. Yeah. Very, very affordable. And then we know in future weeks, if Josh Simpkins... Okay, like at least he found the ball yesterday. He used it horribly yep. from a super coach point of view. He's yep. going to be near back his starting price. Who would have thought? Absolute bargain. And then we've got Hearn, Gaff, Mitchell, Cripps, Doherty, if you don't have him, all yep. off a buy. Yeah. So you, you can't have all of them. You, you can't have all of them. No. And you've got to plan, you know, what can you take on in the meantime? But yeah, yeah I just feel like there's a lot of coaches that, oh, if I want Neil, it has to be this week. Yep. But at the same time, I've probably got to move on English. I've probably got to move on. We've seen with Curtis Taylor 
yeah. Stasevic, they're great to be warm bodies. But in terms of improving your side, yeah. as every week goes by, you're losing cash. Yeah, cash. 10, 20K drip feeds. It adds up. Single week. It, it really does add up. And to be able to get these premiums that are at a value price, it's a very, very small window of time because the reason they're value for most of them is an injury or a heavy tag for, for the most part. Yeah. It, it's one of those two reasons. And that's why they're priced down here. And so to capitalize on that, you've got to have cash in the bank. But to do that, you need to be aggressive and move on the cows at the right time. And then pick up these great value options, which is where why people are, are clamoring over to go get a Draper because they need that cash to get those value premiums. Yeah, the other thing I think, MJ, that's a really interesting topic, and I know we've we've spoken about it a little bit, is mm. the buy free players. You know, currently yeah, it's still just it. Melbourne and Essendon, but we know as the rounds go on, there'll be more. You know, next week we'll unlock another four. Yeah, the week after that another two. So all of a sudden, you know, we're looking at eight teams off a buy. Yep. And we keep saying this: is it better to have someone who's got seven games left or eight? Even though the seven game player might have you know, might average a little bit more. You're getting mm. them less of the time. And I feel like, you know, a lot of coaches this week thought, you know, a Zach Merritt was one, especially off a big yeah. score against the Crows. A lot of people thought, well, this is my guy. You know, good scorer, better yeah. in DT than super coach. Yeah. But it's very, with not knowing these buys, that extra game, if you're already fielding 20 plus players, or even yeah. if you're just fielding 18, totally. the difference might only be 100 and a 50. So you're only yeah. gaining 50 points. If, that, yeah. if you chose Merritt over a Neil, over a Duncan, who are having a lot better seasons, yeah. 50 points over 10 weeks, you'd back those guys in, to catch even it. with one less game, to make up that difference. And I feel yeah. like people are starting to catch on that you can't just be picking a player. You know, we can't just have this bias towards Melbourne and Essendon players. Just because. Just because they've got this extra game. They've got to be we don't comparable know. scorers to the rest of them, don't they? Because not only do we not know the rest of the fixture, but if it is more best 18 rounds in Dream Team and Supercoach, a little different in AFL fantasy, every format, different strategy. But if you can't split a player, then yeah, you take the guy with the extra week. But if you're potentially mm. going, oh, look, I'll go get a Christian Salem in Supercoach or, or Dream Team because I know that in two weeks' time, Jake Lloyd's out. Yeah. No, Lloyd's going to make up any points that he steps back in mm. that one week missed. He, he'll surpass Salem well, in those other weeks. Well, that's where the math falls down pretty quick, MJ. The yeah. assumption I've seen going around is, let's just say, if Adam Saad goes at 100 for 10 weeks, yes, that's the same as James Sicily going at 112 for nine. The issue is that's the idea that you'll have a zero, that that difference yeah. is a non-scorer. Correct. We know most likely you'll have a player that scores, even if it's 20 to 40 points. Sure. That all of a sudden, that difference is now, well, James Sisley only needs to score 107. Yeah. You know, so that's where I think people have thought, you know, this is super important. Yeah. And now I've seen the community sort of switch and realise, and obviously AF is its own beast because yeah. you get their average. But yeah. in DT and Supercoach, people have started to realise, I still need the best players. Yes. Because, but again, Obviously, it becomes more important as time goes on. Mm. If you've got, I've got Lockie Neal for two games, yep. and I've got Clayton Oliver for three, if, if they've got the buy at the very end, sure. well, clearly it swings in that favor. Yes. But when we're making decisions at this point, and there's still you know, nine rounds to go, mm. that difference isn't as important. Yeah. It, it, it's good. And it's the kind of thing that you've got to just think that extra element and layer through because otherwise that's where you just fall over because the logic is right at the top end, but it's not just a simple one for one. It's all the elements beneath it as well. Well, MJ, that also has to be an advantage in these next block of two rounds with six teams on a bye. That has to help them get through the rest of the game. So if I'm looking at a West coast player, you know, or a Sydney player next week, you know, maybe not a Shannon Hearn type, but maybe it's a Luke Parker or a Gaff who are usually a very durable. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Geez, it must be nice to have a week off in a condensed fixture. Because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you know, one of these Melbourne players just say it is a sad. Yeah. And they say, Adam, have a week off, mate. You know, we've got all these games. We've got no buy coming up. They've already breasted well, now Kenner, a, by the way. Well, that's it. And they've already rested a lot of senior players. Yeah. All of a sudden, now guess what? 
that person that you said Saad at 100, Sicily at 107, yeah. well, now Saad's playing the same amount of games because he doesn't yeah. have that opportunity for a rest. So I don't think it's the worst thing for some of these clubs to have a buy no. because at least you hope it will guarantee, you know, that they'll get for through sure. this passage. And yeah. also, MJ, for most important part, you can plan. You know they're not going to be available that week. Correct. Adam Saad could have a rest anyway. And, and clearly, so could any player. We're not sure. just singling out him. Yeah. But I just think that thinking, and I'm glad to see the community catch on pretty quick and realise it's just not as simple as he plays eight games, he plays nine. Yeah. It's, it's not, so it's not that simple, simple at all. There's a lot more to it. And it really does depend on how many players you can field in that round. As we keep saying, the tricky part is... We don't know who's available in what round. After round 12, and again, hopefully within the next five to seven days, the AFL are going to release the next bunch of fixtures. But what we don't know is who's going to be on a buy, who they'll share that buy with. If you want to try to read between the lines, it looks like the state teams are being paired together. So the South Australian teams and the um, Queensland teams likely will be paired together if you want to try to read the room a little bit more. But is, they, is it just going to be two teams? Is we going to get another festival of footy of 20 games in, say, round 14 through to 17? Are we going to get a big cluster of... We just don't know. And so, as we've said multiple times throughout this season, especially since it's restarted, is use the information that you have right now to inform future decisions. And the less you can put off, the better off you're going to be in the medium and the long term with your fantasy side. Yeah, that's it, MJ. The best defense is almost, at least you know, the teams are going to have the buys together. And what I mean by that is Caleb Daniel is not going to have a different buy <laughs> to Jack McRae. Yeah. You know, so if you're looking at your side and you've got Daniel, yeah. Bontempelli, McRae, Bailey Smith, Tim English, oh, and, and maybe you've got Kavara sitting on the bench sure. and Louis Butler on the bench or Cal Porter. Yeah. Yes, you may be in some trouble. Yes. I think that's where... If you start getting too crazy from one team, especially yeah. in the one position, you know, there's a few, there's a few giants forwards that Collingwood. look really good. There's giant, you know, obviously anything like that. Yes. You might have you an issue avoid. and that's where you can, maybe you have to split a 50 50 and say, you know what? Bont's not for me. Cause I've got those other dogs. Sure. You know, Trelaw's not for me. I've already got Adams and Crisp and Maynard. Yeah. Use that logic. But like you said, MJ, it all depends when these buys happen. If there's a buy in round 16, 17, mm. well, there's going to be a lot of trading in that round, those yeah. guys out for players that have a great end to the season and a great fixture. So really, really interesting time. And I think that's the, that's the hardest thing is these rookies, it's going to be really tricky to know not only who to bring in, but when's the perfect time to cash them out. Yeah, well, you talk about fixtures too. Like there's an obvious trend of, of certain lines scoring well against others. Uh, like you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize you want your midfielders playing against the Adelaide Crows. They, they, they're just bleeding points. You want your defenders playing against Richmond. Uh, like they give up a lot of the ball. They're happy for you to think. So, so that'll be that interesting unknown for coaches too as we head towards the end of the year. Not just who our buys are, but maybe you might be able to jag that upgrade at that perfect time or that sideways trade at that perfect time because the fixture enables that perfect matchup for you. Yeah, we've got to put a bit of information now, don't we, about also role players yeah. looking to shut people down. You know, yeah. North Melbourne looked like a really juicy matchup for the Crows as well. Mm. But if you dive a bit deeper, Jasper Pittard had been doing some great lockdown roles. Luke yeah. McDonald had had some success. So there's a few little red flags, albeit the team might be okay. You know, we saw Ben Keyes do a nice job on Gaff. Yeah. You know, we've seen some teams that you may think, you know, Jaron Geary is probably the one that has flown under the radar. Didn't affect Forward too many time, people yeah. yesterday. But I've noticed when it's a, you know, not that Sydney's obviously a really inexperienced team and yeah. the Saints got hold of him as you'd expect, but, you know, he went to Doherty. Yep. Shut him down. And that's a Travis Boak. He got a mm. handle of as well, especially when you pair it with a steal. Yeah. You know, you've got steel in the midfield. And then if he wants to go forward and escape or go back and escape, you know, Geary can go with them as well and, and shut them down. And like you said, even good teams, happy to let people run free. So as yeah. like you mentioned, Richmond, they're just going to do their thing. They don't really care if McRae scores 170 points. They're not going to put a tagger on them. Conversely, usually Port Adelaide, very hard to score in that midfield. Really, really tough. Hawthorne, 
always let the big dogs run free. You know, Patrick Cripps, if he's ever going to get a week where there's little attention, yeah, Liam Shields might go near someone, hmm. but not usually. Carlton, always that Ed Perno risk. I don't know why he didn't go to Tom Mitchell, yep. but there's always that, that risk. And, and Essendon's another one. Just let people go free. You know, yep. you're not going to get any attention in that Bombers midfield. So, you know, we're, we're end of round nine nearly, MJ. We've got plenty of data to see. Pick your match up. You know, avoid this guy because he can shut people down. We all know about the ball. You know, we've, we've all got that DeBoer flag, but there are a few other lines now. And like you said, in game, you know, Richmond defenders, you know, they score really well. There's all yeah. these little things that we can factor into our upgrading. Yeah, no, they certainly do. Hopefully that's going to help you as you navigate your way to this upcoming round and maybe preparing for these final few games of the round two to get you ready for a whole new round of fantasy football. As always, you can get in touch with us uh, via the social media channels at Coaches Panel. Still articles dropping right throughout the week at coachespanel.tv as we try to help you navigate your way through a very crazy fantasy footy year. Kane, thank you for your work today on the episode. No worries, MJ. Thank you. As always, a pleasure and a massive thanks and a shout out to our Patreons for your incredible support of the Coaches Panel. If you want to join our Patreon army, all the links for that are at coachespanel.tv. Good luck this week. And when I mean week, I mean 24 hours because that's when the round's underway. Yet again, the Festival of Footy continues. (laughs) 